Hello everyone. Myself Dr. Harishankar Singh. In the previous video, we have learned about the Ampere Circuital Law and in this video, I will discuss about the applications of Ampere's Law. First, have a look on the outlines. I will start with the magnetic field intensity due to infinite line current and then I will discuss the magnetic field intensity due to the infinite sheet of current. So let's start. Look at this figure. Consider an infinitely long filament current along the z-axis in the blue color. To determine the edge at an observation point P, let us form a closed path that pass through the point P. This path on which the Ampere's law is to be applied. And this is known as Amperean path. And this is analogous to the Gaussian surface in electrostatics. Since this path enclosed the whole current I from the Ampere's law, we can write as line integral h dot dl over control c is equal to I and this will be equal to integral of h phi a phi dot rho d phi a phi. Here the differential length dl is equal to rho d phi a phi because in the case of cylindrical coordinate system we know as the differential length is basically r which will be equal to radius multiplied by differential angle. So dl can be written as rho d phi. A phi is the unit vector along the concentric circle path. As h is parallel to dl, so i can be written as h phi integral rho d phi. As we have chosen a concentric circle as the Ampere path in view of the above equation which shows that h is constant provided rho is constant. Since rho is the distance from the origin to the point P that is under observation, so for the fixed rho we will get i is equal to h phi 2 pi rho. 2 pi rho is the basically circumference of the Ampere surface. So we can write h phi is equal to i divided by 2 pi rho or also we can write as h is equal to i divided by 2 pi rho a phi where a phi is the unit vector in the phi direction. Now I will discuss the magnetic field intensity due to the infinite sheet current. Look at this figure. Consider an infinite current sheet in the z is equal to 0 plane that means in xy plane. In the sheet has a uniform current density vector k is equal to ky ay ampere per meter as shown in the figure. So first take a path 1 1 dash 2 dash 2 1 that is Amperean path in this case as given in the figure. Consider the sheet as a finite number of filament cascaded together. In the figure it is given by black and blue color. Here field does not vary with x and y as source does not vary with the x and y. Hence h y will be 0. Since the current is along y axis field is perpendicular to the current. And also h z is equal to 0 as two symmetric filamentary element along x axis will cancel the z component. Thus the resultant field will be only along x axis does not vary with x and y. Now we will apply the Ampere's law along 1 1 dash 2 dash 2 1. The Ampere's law says that line integral h dot dl over contour c is equal to i enclosed. So for this path that means 1 1 dash 2 dash 2 1 we can write as h dot dl for this path as integral from 1 to 1 dash hx1 dx plus integral 1 dash to 2 dash minus of hz1 dz plus integral 2 dash to 2 minus of hx2 dx plus integral of 2 to 1 hz2 dz and this will be equal to i enclosed. So in this equation second and fourth term will provide the zero contribution for the segment 1 dash 2 dash and 2 1 because 
we have hz as a component is zero because two symmetric filamentary element along x axis will cancel the z component so finally we will have hx1 l minus hx2 l is equal to ky l so l is the basically length of the element 1 1 dash and 2 dash 2 and ky l is the current over the infinite seat so we can write hx1 minus hx2 is equal to ky due to the cancellation of l from each side now we make new comparison path that is 3 3 dash 2 dash 2 3 that you can see here with the dotted path on application of Ampere's law along this path result into hx3 minus hx2 is equal to ky so we have two equations now that is hx1 minus hx2 is equal to ky and hx3 minus hx2 is equal to ky on solving these two equations we will get as hx1 is equal to hx3 is equal to ky by 2 and hx2 will be equal to minus of ky by 2 therefore it can be said that the field is same for all positive z and similarly the same for all negative z because of symmetry the magnetic field intensity on one side of the current seat is negative of that on the other Mathematically, we can write as hx is equal to ky by 2 for z greater than 0. That means for all positive value of z. And hx is equal to minus ky by 2 for all z less than 0. That is for negative value of z. In general, for an infinite seat of current density k, magnetic field intensity can be expressed as h is equal to half k multiplied by a n where a n is the unit vector normal outward to the current seat to the point of interest thus magnetic field does not depend on the distance from the infinite current seat this is analogous to the electric flux density d of an infinite charge seat hence in the magnetostatics we can write as vector h is equal to half k cross a n and in the electrostatics, we can write as D is equal to half rho S N, where rho is the surface charge density. If a second seat of current flowing in the opposite direction, that means K is equal to minus of KYAY is placed at a height Z is equal to H. Then fill in the region between these two seats is H is equal to K cross N. Therefore, z varies from 0 to h we will have the magnetic field intensity h as k cross n and 0 elsewhere if z is the negative or greater than h we will have magnetic field intensity h as 0 thus we will only have the magnetic field intensity in between only two seats thank you for watching this video